Hello, my name is John Michael O'Brien, and I'm an Inside Application Engineer with Keysight Technologies. What I'm going to show you today is how to use Agile and Command Expert and Python to pull back a set of results for a, a reading actually off of an instrument. So we can actually embed a sequence file in a program in Python and take advantage of the numbers that come back. You'll notice I'm already connected to an MSOX 4154A. If you're not familiar with how to do that, you'll want to go back and read some of the existing tutorials for how to actually get started with the software. Uh, I'm going to presume you're already familiar with that and even some of the basics of this software. So make sure you're ready. And then if you are, let's go ahead and continue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Channel. We're going to go to Display. I'm going to make sure that Channel 1 is turned on because that's where our signal is going to be. And then I'm going to come over here to digitize and set it also to channel 1 and tell it to add that step. The digitize command will force the oscilloscope to stop executing any more commands until after it's acquired a new signal and it'll stop the scope at that point. So this is really useful for us for making sure we have good data before we get started. Next we're going to go to the things we actually want to get back. So we're going to make two measurements. We're going to come here to measure. We're going to go to VPP. And we want to use the query form of this, so that way we get back a spot measurement. It's not quite the same as what goes on on the front panel when you turn on a Volt's Peak to Peak measurement, but it'll be suitable for our tasks. Uh, we come over here and go to channel 1, and then we actually want to be able to put this back out so Python can read it. So we need to come over here to variables. We need to select parameter, and then we need to come over here and do VPP. This will give us our first result. You notice it created an output parameters over here. Uh, you may have to expand out variables. It, it doesn't start out that way by default. Then we can come over here and go to frequency. And we also want to use the query form. And again, we're going to go to channel 1, parameter, and we're going to do FREQ. And we're going to add that step. Now the thing we want to do is make sure we pay attention to the order of these because they will come up later. We'll need to know that when we go to retrieve the results from the uh, from Python. So I'll do a quick run here. You'll notice it turns it on. We get a volts peak to peak measurement and a frequency measurement. I'm just connected to the probe compensation signal. So sure enough, we get exactly what we'd expect out of that. So then we come over here. We do save sequence and we will save it out. Uh, I've already done this once before, so obviously it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite. But it's important to pay attention to where you save that. When we go to do this in Python, Python's going to expect to see it in the same folder. So keep an eye on that. So we'll come over here. We've got our Python code. This is actually sliced out of the example that comes with it. Uh, it's the fundamental heart of what's in the example code. The key things we need to have in here is this import Agilent.command expert as CE. Uh, we don't have to call it CE. We can call it anything we want. But the key thing here is that we have to import that. That's the, uh, in this case, the .NET framework component that actually has the command expert software in it. Then we need to modify this down here. Now you'll notice we save this as volts and freak. So we're going to do volts and freak. We don't leave, we don't include the .iseq here. Um, you'll notice the example actually calls out two parameters here. We're going to leave those parameters blank. Uh, we did not produce any input parameters, but if we did, that's where they would go. So if we had any of these, well, we would want to feed them in from here. Next, we'll get the two outputs here, and we need to retrieve those. They actually come out as a list, so uh, and they will come out in the order that they're provided. So you'll notice that VPP is first, so we'll get VPP, and then our second one will be freak, which will be our frequency. Our frequency. Sorry. Lastly, we'll want to print out our results. So we'll do volts plus in the string form of VPP, and then we will do it again with the frequency, and we want a space in there, plus the string form of freak. At this point, we end up with two values. So what we want to do then is save it. And like I said, uh, unless we get creative, we have to save this to the same folder. And you'll find that it's definitely going to make it easier if we do. So we'll save that out real fast. OK. Once we've done that, we can then run it. It'll call on Connection Expert, run the sequence, and give us back our results. 
Hopefully this has been helpful, uh, and if you haven't uh, already looked at it, there are several pieces of documentation in the manual. Uh, just come here to go to help, and you can come in and go to command expert help, and you'll actually find several segments here, uh, Visual Studio, LabVIEW, and more relevantly here, Python, that'll tell you about how to go about all of this process. Uh, thanks a lot, and have a great afternoon.